Hello, Vinny here. I just wanted to walk through a very quick workflow on how to add a new project and user and all of the necessary networking and other uh, infrastructure in place to add a new project to a working OpenStack environment. So it's assumed that I do have admin access and we're gonna see that I'm gonna do very little with admin. So I'm gonna log in, I'm gonna create the project and the user and that is it. And then I'm gonna switch over to the project user and do the rest of the actions. So I'm here logged in as admin, I'm under the admin project and I wanna to go to identity and I wanna add a new project. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create one for myself. Typically you have multiple users within a project. So you may have a, a more general name for a project, but uh, in this case, I'm just gonna have a one-to-one -one mapping for this demo. So I'll create a user with the same name. These of course don't have to be the same name. And I'm gonna select that newly created project. Now I'm gonna leave the role as a member. You'll see I could add myself as an admin. I'm not going to do that here. Okay, so I'm gonna log out now and log in as my new user. We don't have any objects in use except for a security group. And that is because there is a default security group already provided. So let's go ahead and take a look at that just so that we're aware of what that looks like. So we have security groups, we have default. Now you can add your own security group, but what I'm gonna do is just manage the existing rules and I wanna add a rule and I wanna add SSH so I can connect to my instance. And just for testing, I'm gonna go ahead and add ICMP as well. Of course, if you had a web server, you could add port 80, port 443, DNS server, you could add uh, whatever else you need. Okay, so I have those ports added. Next thing I'm gonna do is actually import my public SSH key. So under key pairs, you can create a new pair, but then you have to download the private key and manage that separately. If you already have an existing public private key pair, you can do that here as well. So I'm just gonna paste my public key in. So now if I select this key pair, when I start up the instance, I can get in with my SSH key. Then I already manage that private key on my end. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is look at the networks. So if I look at the topology, Right now, you'll see all I can access is the external network. So this is managed by admin, uh, and I can attach to it, and I can request floating IPs from it, but I can't do anything else to it, and that's perfectly fine. For this use case, this is the standard deployment of uh, most OpenStack deployments, so this is gonna be good enough for me. So I wanna go ahead and create a network. I'm gonna do that here. I could also do that in this section. And you can give this any name you want. Uh, this is just an arbitrary display name. Everything is really referenced off of the UUIDs. So I'm just gonna be consistent and give it the same as my user and my uh, project name. Same with the subnet. So for the internal private isolated network, which no one else can get to outside of this environment, it really doesn't matter what you give it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it 192.168.0.0. And I do have to give it the slash 24 cider. You'll get the uh, help tooltip there that'll give you some information. Okay, gateway, I'm gonna leave blank. It's gonna auto-generate that. I do want DHCP for my private network. I don't need an allocation pool. That's for floating IPs. That's where the external network is handling. And for my DNS servers, I do wanna specify these. And that is it. So now we see I've got the external network and I've got the private network, but they're not connected in any way. So the next thing I wanna do is create a router. I wanna link these two together. So uh, as part of the most recent version of OpenStack, the more recent versions are, are making these steps easier. So all I have to do is select my external network and it'll create an interface from the router to the external network. So you should see it linked together now. So now I have this external network with my router hanging off of it. So now I have to do the same interface connection to the internal network. So let's take a look at the router. We wanna add an interface and I wanna select my private network subnet here. And I'm gonna leave the IP address blank. As before, it will auto-generate that, which will typically be dot one. Okay, so now I see I've got my networking connected. So I have an external network, I have my router and I have my private network. So really that is it. At this point, I am ready to launch my instance. The last thing you may want to check is to make sure you have access to images. So in this case, I do see some public images here. You could create your own. You could share those with other projects, but this is good enough. 
for this demo, I'm going to connect to a uh, Cirrus image, which is very, very small. And we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and go over to Instances. And we're going to launch an instance. And I'm going to call this just a quick test. Tiny is fine. One instance. We're going to boot from an image. We're going to boot from Cirrus. Access and security. I do have a key pair that was auto-selected. And I do want to select my default security group. Networking, since it, there is only one network, it's very simple. If you had multiple networks, you could swap out which network you wanted this instance to come up on. Or in the case that something like the external network could be exposed directly to the end users, you could attach to it, but that's not the case for this deployment. Okay, so it's running now. We see that we have an internal address, 192.168.0.5, a key pair assigned, and so forth. So let's click on the instance name and look at some of the details. We can see it's active. We can see the size, the IP address. We can see the security group. And we do see 20, uh, port 22 open for SSH. We see ICMP. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and look at the console. And we can log in to the console. and confirm that that IP address was, is actually assigned to that instance, so 0 0.5. If I look at my route, I see that there is a 0 0.1 that was created. There we go. Uh, next, we can make sure that DNS was assigned. So resolve.conf did get the information I provided. So let's see if we can ping that. Good. So we know routing is working from my internal network out to my DNS server at least. Uh, what if we try to go outside? Nope, that works as well. So from within this network, I can route externally. So that all looks good. I should be able to resolve host names as well. There we go. Okay, so the last thing to do is how would I get into this instance other than from the console? Well, in order to do that, I need a floating IP. So let's go ahead and do that. So there are multiple places to assign that from. This is one logical place next to the instance if I just associate a floating IP. You'll see here I don't have any floating IPs available. So let's go ahead and allocate a new one from this plus button. And now we're at the allocate floating IP dialog and we can see that we only have one choice from that external network. Okay, so now we have 10.9.49.77 mapped to that 0 0.5 IP. So let's go ahead and associate it. And now it's mapped. So the next thing you do is try and get in from the external. Okay, so let's try ping 10.9.49.77. We can ping it. And we're in. There's 0 0.5. And if I look at my disks, I see that I have VDA in use. I only have a VDA device, so that looks good. But what I'd like to demonstrate lastly here is adding a new volume. So there are no steps required to enable volumes from the project user standpoint. This is something done by the cloud operator, in this case, admin. So that's already been done. So I just want to show if you want to create a new volume, you can do so. It's going to be empty. The type is going to be NFS type and everything else looks good. Okay, we now have a one gig test volume. It is not attached to anything. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to manage the attachments and attach it to our test instance. Okay. So now as um, the user on the instance itself, I can look at D message and see, I now have a VDB device. So if I cat proc partitions again, I see that we have that additional volume attached and now we can do whatever we need with it. All right, so that concludes this quick demo of how to add a project and user and perform all the necessary actions to enable that environment for users. Thank you.